Good evening, good evening everyone. Thanks for jumping on the stream tonight. Pardon me for being a little bit tardy, just a couple of minutes. I trust that everyone has had a fantastic uh, evening. I myself have had a very tiresome. Uh, to all my moderators, uh, give me a sound check. Can you hear me well? Can you hear my voice well? And can you hear the, is the music too loud? Do I need to tone, turn it down a little bit? Give me a sound check. If everything is good, put a one in the chat box. And we're going to get right into it. Good evening. Shout out to Gail. Thank you for getting on the stream tonight. Again, I trust that everyone has had a fantastic uh, evening, afternoon today. Uh, we had a little bit of rain the other day. Thank God we haven't gotten any snow, right? I mean, I'll, I'll take rain any day before I see snow, <laughs> you know? And so far, it looks as though we are going to have one of these unique winters. Hopefully, you never know. March is unpredictable. March is very unpredictable. You never know what March is going to do. So you could have uh, warm weather one minute and then all of a sudden the northeast and hit us and then we got a foot of snow. So hopefully we'll keep maintaining what we have right now with the warm weather, unseasonably warm at that, and uh, a little bit of rain. Uh, we have an interesting topic tonight. You see the subject. Over 40, you ladies should be teaching young women how to do this. How to do what is the question. That's what we're going to get into tonight. Um, I would I would encourage all the ladies that watch this stream to not allow yourself to get triggered. I'm going to talk about some things that are absolutely factual, um, alarming, but true. And uh, true to the extent that it's affecting our whole entire community. No matter what state, and you always hear me say this in my streams, no matter what state, no matter what town, no matter what little small city you live in, it doesn't matter. I don't care if you're in the deep south, in some small quaint town where you have dirt roads, you're going to find some of the same dynamics that I'm going to discuss tonight. Because these dynamics transcend borderlines. They transcend cities and transcend states. This is something that has been ingrained into the mind of most modern women. Now, uh, I know a lot of you ladies, when you hear these kind of talking points, as myself and others have had, um, you tend to think that we're targeting you. No, you're not being targeted. But no matter who the subject is pointed at the subject still has to be had the conversation still has to be had so let's have the conversation because uh, both of us men and women have issues that we have to deal with but what I want to talk about tonight hopefully by the end of the stream you'll have a real clear understanding about a lot of the things that you see right now in modern time in 2023 and you'll and you'll realize how far back it goes how deep the roots go that caused the behavior attitudes and some of the thought processes that we find in our communities right now and within our own personal circles our own families and again the title over 40 we're talking about the age of 40 You've heard me talk about in other strings where a woman reaches geriatric pregnancy at 35 years of age. And I pay tribute to Kevin Samuels when he made note of the fact that the danger zone was between the ages of 27 to 35. Um, that's a real serious statement. It's more than just a comment that he made. It's really something to be looked at and to be understood absent of emotion if you are able to do that because from 27 to 35 again like i mentioned in my stream the other night 
um, you're looking at the danger zone. Why? Because between the ages of 27 and 35 are the years that every woman should be geared up with a sense of urgency. A sense of urgency to get things done that perhaps she didn't do in the earlier years of her 20s, where she perhaps was in college. Most young ladies are in college between the ages of 20 and 25, 26. You're pretty, you're pretty much done with college by 23, really, if you uh, graduated at the right time. You're pretty much finished with college at 23. And that's pending on, that depends on whether you intend to extend your college years with getting, ex, uh, you know, further degrees, like a doctorate or a PhD. That may require more time. But with that being said, um, the danger zone is between the ages of 27 and 35. And that's critical. That's so critical. It's more than a conversation. It's something to be really taken serious because... Uh, not taking it serious and not paying attention to it is the reason why we have the, I would say, the pandemic of homelessness, not just in New Jersey, but in many states throughout the country. California is suffering serious with the pandemic of homelessness as it relates to single women, New York as well, Chicago, and like you've always heard me say, the most vulnerable woman on the earth is an unprotected woman. A woman that is unprotected in the presence of a man who could protect her from danger. Because if she's unprotected, anyone who wants to take anything from her, they can just simply take it. <laughs> you know, it's not going to take a whole lot of energy to take it if someone wants to take it. If another male wants to take it. But if she has a male present who can protect her it changes the dynamics of how things go so that's the importance of a woman not being alone and that's the importance of a woman not living out her life by herself and i'm, I'm going to highlight some things tonight and uh i hope that after hearing the stream tonight You'll have a real clear understanding as to what you need to do for yourself. And if you have daughters or nieces or granddaughters, what you need to do and what you need to be saying to them while they're in the formidable years when they're ahead of the curve, they're ahead of the problem that is awaiting them down the road if they don't get this, un get this information. All right, so again, I thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight. Shout out to all my new subscribers on YouTube. Welcome to the Let's Talk About It Now family. I appreciate you, and I uh, thank you for your support. A uh, little housekeeping as you come into the building. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the share button. This is a channel that will never deal with foolishness. My channel will never deal with nonsense. I promise you that. And uh, as the viewer who wishes to watch content and not be entertained by foolishness, you're at the right channel. Because I will never entertain you, nor will I waste your time with giving you information that is not relevant, that will not help you, and that you cannot feed on and then make some different changes yourself, as, as opposed to how you may be doing things right now. I won't pose myself to be an authority on anything. I'm just a concerned individual just like yourself. And uh, I just happen to do the due diligence of research and study to find the information that I can make it available to you. So I hope you appreciate that. And uh, with that being said, let's get right into it. We're going to talk about uh, a subject that Mr. Kevin Samuels used to address a lot. And uh, it's a subject that the society and, this, and the country we live in right now does not encourage. In fact, they encourage the reverse. They encourage women to not take serious what I'm going to discuss tonight. They encourage women to not take serious the detriment of not having the conversation that I'm going to talk about tonight. 
And as a result, we can see the evidence of that neglect in our community right now with our nieces, with our granddaughters, with our own daughters that we have. And in many cases with ourselves, ladies, some of the issues that you've already have, have, have experienced has been a result of what I'm going to discuss tonight. It's going to be the same thing that my relatives have suffered. The women in my family have suffered. And the cousin, female cousins that have suffered. And I'm sure after you hear this stream, you'll see, you'll see the comparison as it relates to yourself as well. Okay, we're going to talk about what should you be saying? What should you be saying? What should you be saying to your daughter as she's growing? I'll tell you where the problem is, and I'm going to walk slowly through this because I want you to really get what I'm trying to um, convey to you tonight. And again, I thank you for getting on the stream tonight. What we don't say hurts us as much as what we say, because if what we say is incorrect, it'll do damage. If we avoid saying what we need to say, it'll also do damage. But how does it affect a woman and why is it so important that a woman get the right information? Because she carries the seed of the future. She's the one that carries over the culture to the children. That has always been her responsibility. She's carried the culture. And many of us can relate to that because we remember Big Mama. Big Mama was always the elder family member, female, who always did all the cooking. You remember that. We remember her macaroni and cheese and her collard greens, if that's what you ate, cornbread. We remember the family gatherings, the family reunions. It was usually Big Mama who led the team in terms of the cooking for those particular events. And we have fond memories of that. The saddest thing about that is that when all of the big mamas that gave us the best memories in our family, when they begin to die off around 2005, the last of the big mamas begin to die off. We're talking about relatives who had 15 and 16 children. I'm sure some of you that hear this stream, <laughs> you probably can relate of relatives that you knew who had 15 and 16 children. I mean, you can't even fathom that today, but just imagine 15 and 16 children of whom she may have outlived many of her own children and yet still held the majority of the family together, kept us intact, kept us unified, kept us loving one another, kept us from arguing and bickering amongst ourselves, right? It's funny that when Big Mama died, the family fell apart, became fragmented. And I'm gonna tell you why all of what I just said is important as I go into the stream. See, Big Mama represented, she represented the era around 1945 or just prior to 1945. That was an era where the women taught their daughters to be just like they were. And we're talking about in some of the most unideal conditions, the most unfavorable conditions, where we were under segregation, where we were being discriminated against, and yet our communities were tight-knit. And I know many of you that hear this stream, you know what I'm talking about. You remember the tight-knit family where you could go next door and get you uh, some milk or get you some bread or sugar. You could just knock on the next door of your relative or even the next door neighbor who may have not been related to you. It was just a different era and it was a different time and it was a different mindset. People thought differently. They took an importance to how they were viewed 
They made it important how they spoke to one another. Everything was spoken with respect. Um, elderly people were never disrespected by younger people. We understood our place. Everybody knew the role that they had to play to do what? To keep the community tight. That was the point. That was the point. And it was a different time. It's funny how when we have these conversations, and I've had these conversations with so many people, that when we talk about a different time, we talk about it like it can't come again. Like it's an old automobile that's outdated, that's no longer worthy to be driven any longer, that no one's interested in. And, uh, and I can understand it because the narrative the way the society is going today is basically obliterating the whole traditional standards and structure and discipline of the family in particular all families but in particular the black family we have as a community begin to lose ourselves as a community that's why you have relatives right now I do that we don't really speak too much we don't see them often we love each other but we don't see each other often big mama made that a priority and she kept us reminded of the family and this is why we had so many family reunions and I'm sure that many of you that listen to this stream right now you can't remember you can probably count on one hand how many family reunions you've been to in the last five years. But I can recall, and those of you that were born in the 60s, like myself, you can remember that ev almost every summer or every other summer, we had a family reunion. We got together and went to some other state where our family members were. They came to us and we had the family reunions in the backyard and or in the front yard or in some park and the elderly women always got around the young women the young girls in the family and they were always giving them wisdom and knowledge about how they should act and how they should behave and how they should go about their life as they grew what to watch out for what to beware of and they taught them the values of family they taught them the values of taking care of home, taking care of themselves, hygiene. They taught them about how to care for their husband, how to serve their husband. And I know, you know, that's a really, that's a really uh, foreign word to say today to the modern woman. No, no doubt. Um, to serve a man, what? <laughs> not me that's the attitude today well we can go with that attitude but I'll tell you what the outcomes are clear that once the family structure is broken the whole community is broken the children are gone astray no guidance no direction no focus and sadly, today, 85% of all households in the black community are headed by a single mother, which means there's no man present, no man to guide the young men who may be present, which then leads to more of a problem, more of the same going forward into the future. The same men that many of you ladies don't want you turn your sons into the same man that you don't want you nurture and you cultivate the behavior and the attitude of the same man that you don't want and therein lies the problem because mom is always going to be mom the balance in family is that when a father is present, 
why mom's nature, the mother's nature is to nurture and to comfort. That's her nature. She can't help it. But the father's nature is to discipline. He's the disciplinarian. He can't discipline unless he has the full support of the mother who's present. That's what creates the balance on the scale. But today, in our communities, in many communities, but in the black community in particular, the scales have been tipped. They're tipped severely to the point there is no balance at all. Daughters don't respect their mother. Sons don't respect their father even if he is present. In many cases, the culture has turned us upside down. Upside down. So how do we get around that? What do we do about a situation that looks irreparable? It can be repaired. Because there was a system and a narrative and an idea that created it in the first place. That system and that narrative started way back prior to the civil rights movement. And I've mentioned this before in my other streams uh, about this narrative that was created known as the feminist movement. And I'm going to get into what exactly the feminist movement did and why it was done. I'm going to continue talking about it because I'll tell you something. Um, to my surprise, well, not really to my surprise. I'm not really surprised because this generation doesn't read and this generation doesn't study. And uh, this generation doesn't look back into the past to see what the past looked like to see how far we've fallen astray. So as a result, we're so fallen astray today, we don't even know how far we've fallen. We're victims and don't even know we've been victimized because we don't know the past. That's the problem. We don't know where family used to, what family used to look like. We really don't know. We don't know what it looks like to see a functional household where many of us don't. Some of us do, and I'm not talking about all of us. Um, I couldn't talk about all of us because I don't know everyone but I can say this much the numbers are so high and the evidence of what I'm saying is clear that we have lost our way as it relates to family as it relates to uh, a healthy home life and what that actually looks like and I'll tell you one thing that started it Women that were born during the uh, baby boomer years. And this you're talking about 1945. Again, they raised their daughters to become modern, independent women, forsaking traditional family structure. That's what you have to understand. Again, Big Mama was the mother of the baby boomers. And then you had what was called the silent generation. The silent generation, which would be my grandmother, who uh, I just recently lost just uh, about two years ago. And I will tell you from my own personal experience, my grandmother, uh, <clears throat> she, she made me feel like I was King Kong, like I could do anything. I will tell you that. Um, she made me think there was nothing I couldn't do. That's how much she encouraged me. And I'm sure those of you that listen to this stream, if you've had a grandmother like that and, you, and, you, and you've lost her, you can remember those fond memories and that feeling that I'm trying to express right now. Um, my grandmother was everything, you know. For me, as a young guy, as a young man, she was, she was one of my heroes, no doubt. And uh, she taught me a lot. But that was the silent generation, okay? 
these were family members again that had 15 or 16 children some of them are aunties and yet they remained married now we're going to get into it they raised their daughters to be like them which was a better representation uh, filled again with warm memories you know filled with more warm, warm memories the baby boomers looked at their silent generation here's where the problem began the baby boomers they looked at the silent generation as ignorant or stuck in the past and as a result what did it do it bred rebellion they began to fight against the traditional values of family life and what it meant to be a wife and what it meant for a wife to be cooperative with her husband. Haven't you noticed if you've been living longer than 24 hours how there is nothing admirable in the mindset of the traditional of the uh, modern woman I should say as it relates to being cooperative with a man no that's not the narrative today the narrative today is for you to be independent for you to get a good education get a good career with a good paying salary so that you can prove so that you can prove that you don't need a man and that is a dangerous narrative notwithstanding the fact that many of us have so many issues that we have to work on I will give you that so many issues but to have the conversation is almost taboo and anyone who's willing to have the conversation is attacked for even having it which clearly identifies that the scales have been tipped and they've been tipped in such a way that the whole idea of traditional family traditional marriage has been all but obliterated all but obliterated and this was the silent generation that was being rejected against by the baby boomers here's what happened after that 1945 and upward then came the advent of birth control and the Roe versus Wade which legalized deletion of an unborn child which which uh, which freed women I want you to listen to me this is what freed women to have free sex without restrictions for the first time in history and to live sexually irresponsible and by default it all but made the traditional family life unimportant then came generation X that's my generation from 1965 to 1980 then from 1980 to 1985 until around the year 2000 which would be my generation again just generation X then you had the Millennials to the late Millennials or the Xennials and this folks is where we fell off the cliff I mean we fell completely off the cliff as the saying goes the blind lead the blind they both fall off the cliff this is where the black community fell completely off the cliff you have to remember this ladies if you can't say it meaning you don't have the knowledge to teach it then you can't raise it you have to know what to teach your daughter or the likelihood of her being single for life is real and it's a real reality one in four this is what the stats data and statistics say blackdemographics.com 
by black people for black people. It says one in four will marry in a lifetime. And this is documented. This is not my opinion. This is documented. Ladies, education and material acquisition has been ingrained in the psyche of the modern women today. How much you have financially, how much material acquisition you have, how big your home is, or what kind of designer clothing you're wearing. This has become the main focus and family and traditional family for that matter. And keeping the family together in spite of the ups, the downs, the bitter, the sweet, the hot, the cold, like four seasons, all relationships go through all four seasons. And some of those four seasons are not as mild as we would like. Sometimes we get a foot of snow, sometimes we get two feet of snow. Sometimes we just get a little, a little powdering on the ground and it's gone. You don't even realize it snowed. But that's how relationships are and that's how marriage is also. What we have lost in the traditional sense is the stick and stay power. As you've heard me say in other streams, the women of old were simply made of better stuff. They were made of better stuff. And we can get back to that. But that's ha that has to become a desire across the board as a community. Because one individual like myself, Kevin Samuels, or anyone else who speaks on these kind of talking points, it won't matter unless it becomes as ingrained and the importance thereof not to pay attention to the tone, not to pay attention to the personality of the individual that's speaking it. We have to get to the place where we stop killing the messenger and just get the message. If we can ever get to that place so we can do that, oh man, we'll make some strides uh, that we have not seen in quite some time. But this is where we have to get to. Again, education, material gain and acquisition it's been ingrained in the mentality the new term for marriage when it's being dissolved is this silly undefined word called irreconcilable differences what the hell is that if it's irreconcilable that means either one of them are dead is dead <laughs> Or one of them have moved completely out of reach. But if you are still together married, you can reconcile anything that you desire to reconcile. Irreconcilable differences. What does irreconcilable differences do to the family structure? I'll tell you what it does. It creates what's called the divorce that never ends. <laughs> That's what it does. It creates divorce, the divorce that never ends. Because now you can always use that term for any reason to be divorced. So you break up the family. And the saddest part about that reality is that 85% of all marriages are dissolved by women. Men are not walking out of their relationships. Men are not walking out of their marriages. 85%. Now I know you could argue back with me. You could, but the stats, data, and statistics will prove you wrong. 85%. Do a test yourself. Ask as many women that you know personally if they're divorced, who filed. You're going to be alarmed to find out that most of whom you question will tell you that they're the ones that filed. And they're going to give you a story. They're going to tell you it was his fault. They're going to tell you he did something, he cheated, he did something, you know, you, you, you know the stories. You'll never hear at all that it was something she did or failed to do that could have saved the marriage. You'll never hear that. 
that conversation will never be heard. You'll always hear that it's something he did. That is the difference between the women of old and the modern woman. They were just simply made of better stuff. If you don't think Big Mama went through problems with, <laughs> with her husband, you would be surprised. Anyone that you know right now who's been married for 30, 40, 50 years and they're smiling and holding hands and walking down the street or perhaps speed walking. And I'm sure in some of your communities you see the elderly couples together walking or riding bikes with one another. They've been together 45 and 50 years. They've raised their children. Now they have great grandchildren and great great grandchildren. And these two individuals are still together and they're happy today. But if they were to sit you down and tell you the journey that they had to travel on during the course of that 45 or 50 years, it would make your head spin. And you'd have to ask yourself the question, are you made of that kind of stuff? Could you withstand that kind of stuff? Sadly enough today. Sadly enough today. We are more willing to walk away for the slightest reason and break up the family than the women of old. And why do we do that? Because the modern woman teaches her daughters to fear the men that she would potentially in the future desire as a husband or potential lifelong mate. She teaches them to fear. You don't have to teach your daughters to fear. All you have to do, ladies, is to teach them and give them parameters, not fear, parameters. Of course, you have to teach them what to be aware of and what to look out for, but not to fear the whole concept of commitment as it relates to marriage, no. And sadly, this is what is being taught to young ladies. But over 40, you should be mature enough and experienced enough to teach them how to do this. And this is not the case. See, the big mamas today are 30 and 35 years of age. They don't have the same wisdom and they certainly don't have the same life experience. They don't have the same stick and stay power as the women of old. So today, the young women don't have anyone to look to for advice, not any real advice, not any real advice. Because to my sad regret, the big mamas today, they're sold to the same narrative as the young people are sold to. So now you have uh, elderly, older women who should be counsel. They're now friends with the young ladies and they're going along with the same things that the young ladies are going along with. And there is no counsel. That's where the breakdown is. That's where the breakdown is. 26% of black women earn more than $50,000 a year. And then why is that important? Because when you don't take as an important aspect of the necessity of having a man in your life to get to the end of life, you're looking at real, realistic, term, realistic uh, numbers that could very well hinder you from being able to get to the end of life successfully, at least with a high quality of life. If you earned, I'm gonna give you an example. And shout out to Kevin Samuels. If you earned 25, from the age of 25 to, 60, uh, to 65, if you earned $50,000 a year, and mind you, that's more than what the average black woman earns. The average black woman earns between $28,000 a year 
to $30,000 a year. Now, some of you are saying, you know what? I make way more than that. Well, you're above average, no doubt. You're above average, no doubt. But were you taught to cooperate with a man, even with that income? Because if you're not, if you weren't, hypergamy is natural. You're going to want the man that you find yourself with to at least be making what you're making, if not more. That lowers your dating pool. It lowers your choices. Because the average black man makes between forty and $45,000 a year. That's the average. We're talking about 85%. The average black man makes between $20 to $22 an hour. I know you're saying, what? I know you didn't know that. Some of you didn't know that, but that's the reality. And all too often, many modern women today won't accept that. And that's fine. That's fine. Again, like I said, hypergamy is natural. You want who you're with to at least be making what you're making, if not more. Hypergamy with women is natural. I get it. That's what makes it so much more important for you to prioritize relationships early. You got to understand something. A man is not in his financial stride until he reaches about 45 to 50 years of age. And this is when he's began the journey of building himself in his early 20s. I did a stream a few months back called, Are You, Do You Want the Prize for the Race You Were Unwilling to Run? And uh, again, to my sad regret, the modern woman today, she wants the prize that she has never been willing to run. Many ladies want to sit at the finish line and receive the trophy that she never ran the race for. This is why when you were in college, and for you ladies that are listening to this stream, you know I am 100% correct. When you were in college, you saw more of your non-black counterparts getting married while you were in college. You went to weddings while you were in college. But to my sad regret, black women in college were not taught to prioritize relationships and they certainly weren't taught to prioritize marriage. They were told to go to school, get education, girl. Don't rely on no man. Go get your education. That way you ain't got to depend on no man. And all of the horror stories associated with a relationship, she was told those horror stories. She was never told the good values of what it meant to be in a relationship that was functional. She was always told the dysfunctional behaviors of a dysfunctional relationship. What is that doing to her? It's making her afraid, fearful, hesitant about the whole idea of getting serious in a relationship or taking a man serious while she went to weddings all through her college years with her non-black counterpart who was getting married. Those same non-black counterparts that she went to college with, the the husband who that young lady ended up marrying, he's now the CEO of some company. Or he's a high six-figure or seven-figure income earner. Or he's a millionaire. But she was with him when he was eating pizza at the local pizzeria. They were sitting on the floor in the dorm room while he was eating potato chips and ramen noodles he didn't look like much at that time but she made herself available and she rode that wave with him that's what's called cooperating with a man that's what's called building with a man he's the builder you are the help meet 
to him building what he's trying to build. And as a result, she got the prize at the end. She was able to walk with her hands up holding that same trophy that the modern woman today wants to hold but was unwilling to run the race. This is the sad thing. This is the sad thing. And the thing about it is, ladies, you need to learn how to cooperate with the man because it's a necessity. It's not a choice. It's certainly not a choice that you can afford to ignore at all. Young men, young men were taught to treat, how to treat a woman in our homes, in the single parent homes. We were taught how to treat you. But women were never taught how to treat a man. And this is where the imbalance comes. The scales are tipped and it's not in our favor as a community. All of our good memories, again, came from the generation that we rejected and wa as washed up. Today, the modern woman has replaced her man with her son and now they are son husbands and continue to compete with her daughters. I don't believe this was intentional. I really don't. I believe at best, many women were trying to simply protect their daughters. But you gotta understand that the modern woman and what she's taught her daughters has all been based on what she's personally experienced. Her bad outcomes, her hurts, her pains, her setbacks as it relates to relationship. So she began to prepare her daughter for what didn't even happen yet. She's preparing her daughter for what happened to her. Her daughter has not even experienced anything like that. So her daughter leaves out of her home with a sense of fear for what she hasn't even experienced. And this is where the problem is. Now let's look at the cost if you're by yourself, ladies. Let's look at the cost of living in New Jersey alone. And I'm in New Jersey, so I'm going to deal with New Jersey as an example. Let's look at the cost of living in New Jersey. One adult, two children, two working adults, and two children. Let's use that as the example. You will need approximately $71,641. And with no children, you would need $33,575 per year to survive. And this is after tax. Now before tax, with no children, you would need $33,575. And with children, $83,395 simply to survive follow me your annual tax every year would be five thousand approximately three hundred and thirty five dollars and that's with no children and with children you would need eleven thousand seven hundred and fifty four dollars simply to survive most women refuse to question their mothers as to how they were being taught as to how they were being um guided as it relates to the necessity of relationship as it relates to the necessity and the importance of marriage they were never taught that they had no woman around them to teach them that so when they began the journey of relationships they were literally throwing mud up against the wall simply to see what sticks and as the mud began to fall off the wall that they were throwing against the wall that represented one disappointment after the next, one hurt after the next, one downfall after the next, one bad outcome after the next. That's the mud being thrown up against the wall simply to find out what sticks or to see what sticks. But had they been taught, they could have avoided all of that. That's why you hear me say the women of old were simply made of better stuff. They were taught differently. They didn't get caught up in this new modern mindset that we have today. It's all about the bag. Get the bag. Get your education and get the bag. And then after you get the bag, 
get the designer clothes. And after designer clothes, get the designer bags. And after designer bags, get the upscale car. And after that, get the nice home in a gated community. And after that, get your dog. And after that, you find yourself aging and you're by yourself because you were never taught the necessity or the importance of relationship and marriage. And it's taboo to call mama wrong. Oh, no, you, you don't talk about mama. That's like taboo. No, you don't say nothing negative about mama, even though you know you weren't taught. But you are judged the hell out of your father. And therein lies the double standard. Because most of our women have grown up in a home, again, like I said, with a single parent. Mama didn't know how to cooperate with a man either. She didn't have the stick and stay power. I told you where it stopped. It was the silent generation. After the silent generation, the baby boomers, who were the children of the silent generation, they began to rebel because they, they began to look at the silent generation as a group of ignorant women who were weak, who were allowing themselves to be controlled and abused by the men in their lives. So that whole rebellion against men being in the authority in the home and men leading the home became a taboo conversation because the society began to teach women that you don't need him. So they, they started to provide social programs these social programs made way for you to provide for yourself financially where you didn't need the man so the men were pushed out of the home now let the narrative speak and they'll say that the men walked out on their wives that's a lie the social programs were put into place and black women chose to take the meager um uh, the meager funds from social programs and government programs in place of her man. This is what happened. Do your research. This is what happened. Men did not walk away from their families. Women fell into the trap of the feminist movement. And here's the real ironic thing about the feminist movement you know the feminist movement was basically white women who were expressing their discontent at their own men in government but here's the real real funny thing about that they were all married they all had husbands they weren't protesting against their husband See, that's, that's the thing that you didn't catch. They weren't protesting against their husbands. No. They were protesting against government programs that were discriminating against them. They valued their home life. They valued their family life. And they valued their husbands. When black women jumped on the bandwagon of the feminist movement, they were already husbandless this came right at the rise of the civil rights movement and it all but eclipsed the civil rights movement and caused black women who did have husbands the ones that did and had relationships to walk away from their husbands and to walk away from their marriages to accept government subsidies. So a physical man was replaced by a check. That's the reality. Sad, but true. Sad, but true. Let's continue. Let's see how hard it is on your own. And we're talking about New Jersey. We're using New Jersey as the example. Whatever state you're in, 
do your research and find out what those numbers look like in your state. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they'll be just as disparaging. Transportation, let's look at transportation. Many of New Jersey residents commute by public transportation. And I know that because I commuted with public transportation for years. And I know many people that do that even today. Now that's not a problem if you're in a relationship. But I think it becomes problematic for a single woman. I think it could become problematic for a single woman. Many of New Jersey residents com commute by public transportation. In fact, after New York City, Jersey City, Hoboken, and these are cities in New Jersey, Newark have some of the uh, highest proportions of public transportation users in the country. They have the highest proportion of public transportation. According to the Census Bureau, the average commute time in New Jersey is 37.7 minutes in 2019. That's just over 10 commutes in the US, which is 27.6 minutes. If you don't take public transportation, you need to pay for a car. And we know that's true. You end up renting a car or perhaps taking out a, a car loan, which then becomes another financial burden. According to uh, Gas Buddy data, March 2022, and these are current stats, the average price of a gallon of gas in the Garden State is $4.27. It may be higher in your respective cities. Check it out when you get time. When it comes to car insurance, insurance.com, March 2022, again, current stats. They report New Jersey's 30th in the nation with an average annual premium of $1,319. Let's talk about taxes. Now, this may not, this information not, may not be relevant to you, some of you that are listening, if you're not in New Jersey, but what I'm encouraging you to do is to take the same information I'm sharing with you right now and look, at, look up those stats in your state. Look up those same stats in your state. You're going to find where it's a problem. It says New Jersey taxes are among the highest in the nation. The top tax rate in New Jersey's progressive state tax system is 10.75% for those over 5 million. That may sound high, um, but it's still lower than the top income tax rates in California and Hawaii. Property taxes in the Garden State are the highest in the nation. However, with an average effective property tax rate of 2.40%, this is significantly higher than the national average of 1.19%. Don't let these numbers throw you. I want you to do your own research. It's important. Especially for some of you ladies that have daughters, granddaughters, and they're growing now. They need to know the importance of marriage and relationships. Because I'll tell you something. The whole delusion that women can be unprotected alone and by themselves. Oh yeah, you can do it. I mentioned something in uh, one of my previous streams a few months back. I talked about compound living. And uh, if you don't learn how to cooperate, or man, you will have to do that. Compound living is when a bunch of women move in with one another. You're all sitting on the love seat or the couch, eating pizza and watching a movie, Netflixing and chilling. And all of you are splitting the bills of that house. Now, if you want to do it like that, you can. But alone and by yourself as a single woman, not likely. Unless you earn an income that can equal two incomes. If you're making $100,000 a year, $150,000 a year, you might be able to get it. You might be able to make it. But again, like I said in the beginning of the stream, the average black woman makes between $28,000 to $30,000 a year. This is the average. We're talking about 85%, folks. So you can't judge it by anecdotal examples. Individuals that you may know, or you yourself that may be listening, if you make 75 to 100,000 or even more, you're anecdotal. You don't represent the majority. 
you really don't represent the majority at all <laughs> you're literally a small piece of the entire majority but the majority again makes between 28 to 30 thousand dollars a year black women in this country and that is a fact so as a single woman you may find it very difficult to survive to retirement. And I'm gonna go into that in a few minutes. This is why ladies, telling your daughters to solely focus on education before marriage is setting her up to die alone. You're setting her up. Again, I don't believe it's intentional. I really believe that most women believe that they're doing the right thing. I believe that most women believe that they're helping their daughter. They think they're protecting her by telling her to go get a great education. And there's nothing wrong with education, don't get me wrong. Black women and black men, we've always been an educated race. Education has never been foreign to us. It's when we begin to substitute Family, relationships, and or marriage for education is when we fell off the rails because education has always been there. Always been there. We have many women that were highly educated, PhDs and everything, and had wholesome marriages in times past. So what changed is what I'm trying to get you to understand. What changed? The modern woman today, she dresses like her daughter. She parties like her daughter. She talks like her daughter. She thinks like her daughter. Preparing her to get the outcomes like she received if she failed to cooperate with a man. That's what happened. See, again, like I said in the very beginning of the stream, you have to start the conversation off from where it started. You have to start it from where it started so you can understand where we are right now and why the thought process it is such. Why is this big, independent, I am woman, watch me roar, while we can walk throughout our communities no matter where we live and we don't see married couples? Oh, there's a whole lot of dating going on. You heard me say that. Oh, it's a lot of dating going on. Let me tell you. But dating is stupid. I know some of you that are dating, you think you're doing something. But I'm going to tell you something. Dating is stupid. Because everybody knows what dating means. Men certainly know what dating means. Dating means a whole lot of free sex. At the cost of a meal or a movie. A little wine and dining. And nowadays, they don't even wine and dine anymore. Straight to the bedroom. They wine and dine afterwards. After the bedroom. <laughs> so dating is stupid. Because what dating used to mean, it doesn't mean that today. It doesn't mean that today. The average person, the average woman and man that goes on a date, in most ca in a lot of cases are not thinking about marriage at all. And they're certainly not thinking about any long-term relationship. They're thinking about, let's get over this meal so we can get to the next hotel. That's a date. Dating is stupid. Unless you're marriage-minded. Unless you have a mind to stay. Unless you have a mind for a traditional relationship and a traditional marriage. What's the point? What is the point? Ladies, of running your body count up, absent of a relationship. What's the point? Because I'll tell you something, if you never paid much attention to it, when you teach your daughters to go to school and get a good education and girl, do your thing and don't think about no serious relationship until you get in your 30s. And that's what many modern women are teaching their daughters. Don't even think about a serious relationship or marriage until you hit your 30s. Uh, that is horrible advice. 
horrible advice. Why? Because what are you telling her to do? You're telling her without saying it to run her body count up. Meaning, girl, go have a good time. Don't get serious with no boys. Just have a whole lot of sex and party. That's what you're saying. I know many of you don't want to hear, may not like to hear this, but uh, that's exactly what you told your daughter if that's what you told her to do. That's exactly what you did. And by the time she finishes running her body count up, she finds herself past the age of 27, hitting her 30s. She's already found herself in her career. She's making good money. Now she's going to start to look for a relationship because finally she's starting to take it serious because she knows her internal clock is ticking. Here's where the problem lies, though. She's making good money now. She's going to want a man who makes the equal amount of money, if not more. But that man started building himself in college. And she has not learned how to even cooperate with a man. Her relationship skills. Her relationship skills have atrophied. They atrophied. Those muscles are frozen. That's why every relationship does not work out. Pairing complete. And uh, that's the problem. This was a stream tonight for information. And I will tell you, this station, this channel is not an entertaining channel. It will be entertaining at times, but I'll tell you, it's more of an informative station, informative channel. Unlike all the other silly things that's on YouTube and Facebook, it's so much silly information, so much information that really not even worth your time. This is conversation tonight I believe was one of the serious conversations that needs to be had and needs to be had more because we're not we haven't slowed down on making children children are still coming daughters are still being born but what does their future look like if they don't understand what I just discussed tonight and what can you do and what will you do to curtail it from going in the same direction that so many women, black women in particular, are experiencing, have experienced, and will continue to experience if this does not become a different thought process from what we see today. It's a free-for-all today. Absolute free-for-all. The children who are young and impressionable have no idea what real, functional, traditional marriage and relationship even looks like. They're bombarded by the television. They're bombarded by cartoons and all kinds of narratives that steer them in the opposite direction of what I'm talking about right now. That's what makes it all the more important for women who are in the home to understand this talking point. Don't get in your feelings. Don't get triggered. It won't matter even if you do because the problem still remains. It's remaining right now even in your own family. After you hear this, this is what we have to do. This is what we need to do. We must do it. Otherwise, throw in the towel. Throw in the towel. If we've given up on changing the trajectory of our community and how it looks, if we've given up on creating a better example for young women, young girls that are growing up to see the importance of what relationship and traditional marriage looks like and the importance of why they need to have it, there is a divine order as it relates to relationships. It's not something that just someone made up. There's a divine order in having a man, a woman, and child. 
That's a divine order. There's a reason. And because that whole system has been broken by people deciding to do, society deciding to do whatever they want to do, irregardless of divine order, is the reason why you see the chaotic mess that you see right now. That's the reason why we see it. Again, one in four black women will marry in a lifetime. Those that are left will die alone. Tent farms, as I've mentioned in earlier streams before I close, are opening up in every state in the United States. Tent farms in unprecedented numbers. And guess who's occupying these tent farms? These are not old women. These are women with young children living on the street in tents, unprotected. Why? Because of this ridiculous narrative and because of them not being told the importance of traditional marriage and the importance of having a man in their life. It has not served us. And ladies, it has not served you. It has not served you. Because when hot girl summer is over, winter comes. Soon as hot girl summer is over, winter comes. Stella will not get her groove back this time. We have to turn the narrative around. Turn the narrative around. With that being said, I thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight. It's been another stream of Let's Talk About It Now. I'm your host, Charles Chambliss. With that being said, have a blessed night, a blessed day tomorrow, and I look forward to coming before you again at another time. Have a great night, folks.